the last relapse, I was uh, getting onto a highway after a seven-day bender, and uh, it's going over 100 miles an hour in a blackout, and almost ran into the back of a minivan. I was getting on the highway, and with some grace of God, I uh, snapped out of it and swerved around this minivan, you know, going over 100 miles an hour, and uh, kind of realized that I needed to try a little bit harder in my recovery because I just about died. I would drink every break I had from work, lunch break, afternoon break, and as soon as I got home, I just continued it all night long. And a um, number of evenings where I would get home early and start preparing dinner for, for my wife and um, black out and wake up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning in bed, not remembering that she had come home. I had finished cooking dinner and served the dinner and, and cleaned the dishes. When I was at home, though, it was uh, me passed out for three I wouldn't say three days at a time, but, you know, a, a full day or two at a time and uh, just trying to get back to that uh, state of mind where I could be awake and go and find drugs again and uh, get high again. So I was basically useless to my family. I lied to them all the time, uh, was taking money out of our bank account to buy drugs with. So, I mean, I was cheating them as well as lying to them. Something clicked in me and I just said, I'm done. As much as I had probably tried a thousand times, five thousand times, something finally clicked in me, and I just said, "This was it." And I—that was the end of my—that was the end of my drinking. That was my last drink. That was kind of like that was life before I got serious with the Freedom Center. I picked up the phone and I reached out for help and was referred to the Freedom Center. What makes the Freedom Center special is, I'd have to say, uh, Jim Weiss and Lawrence Freedom. I mean. They aren't just some counselors looking to take your money and give you some information. They take you under their wing and they care about you. I never left the Freedom Center. So after I completed the primary program, I just became a, a regular attendee at our aftercare alumni support group once a week. But what I also would do is I would come back on Monday nights and Friday nights and sit in with the group. And I would try to support other people early in recovery as I built up three months, four months, five, six months of sobriety. I realized I loved just giving back. I was so excited about recovery. It had changed so much of my life in even such a short period of time. And uh, they show you love. You know, and when you come out with a drug problem, there isn't a whole lot of people that are showing you love. When I stepped into recovery, I stepped into it with both feet, you know, hitting the ground and running. And I stepped into the 12-step community, and I got to a place where um, I just really love supporting people. There's no limit to what I could do now. I mean, I kind of have that uh, mentality back of, you know, I can do whatever I put my mind to. I'm not uh, wrapped up in this drug game and, and this addiction, this way of life that I, I was living a year ago never judged or criticized and I was just loved and supported and uh, they pretty much held me up until I was able to see the good in me. I'm a father to my children and a husband to my wife which was something that I wasn't before and uh, it feels good on a daily basis to come home and be home and be there for my kids and be there for my wife. And you know I, I, I still quote the Grateful Dead, what a long strange trip it's been.